My podcast with the Hunting Public Guys at ATA went up about a week ago, and I have been hammered with questions, emails, messengers, Instagram. You guys keep bringing it on. It's uh, great. I'm helping. I've answered probably 400 people in the last five or six days. It's been great. So thank you, Hunting Public Guys. We're making a change. We're helping a lot of people work. Uh, so what I'm doing here, this video is that answer. There's a lot of consistency in the answers I'm giving everybody. And I'm going to cover some of the basic topics. So if you don't see your answer in here, I'm probably going to cover it along the way. And then, of course, if you don't see, you know, if you have more questions, hit me on email, hit me on Messenger. I'm under W-R-A-Y Ranch Ferry on, on Facebook, and I'm not changing that. Sorry. So uh, here we go. Okay, the first thing that's coming up on a regular basis is, hey man, I shoot 65 pounds or 70 pounds. I'm running 28 inch draw, 29 inch draw, the, the basic normal human size people, even for shorter draw lengths. But I got myself some 400 spine or 340 spine Twizzlers. <laughs> I'm thinking about strapping like 400 grains up front and giving her a rip. And you can do that, but it's gonna fly sideways. And uh, that's not recommended. So if you have a bunch of, you know, on-spine arrows for a balanced system, what I call a, you know, 9% FOC system, and you're running anything, you know, under a 300, and your draw weight's between 60 plus, and your draw length's 26 plus, um, you're going to have to get some adult arrows, 300s, and a 250 is what I recommend. If you're shooting 50 to 60, you're going to want to get a 340, and a 300. And then you're going to want to go to the uh, playlist called uh, High FOC Arrow Builds on the Ranch Ferry channel and click on Heavy Arrow Hand Loads and follow the directions there. So that's the first step is uh, if you have underspined arrows, you can't load them up. I mean, you can, but they're not going to fly consistently. They're going to go all over the place. And you're going to say, my broad heads don't fly and my equipment's bad and I got to put the flip hats probably ought to turn the wing dingers and change the string. No, your arrows under spine and coming off like a banana. Uh, sorry, it's just the facts. That's okay. If you're shooting a 400 grain arrow with a 100 grain point, it'll fly sort of, that's fine. It will not fly with adult weights. And I don't recommend it because you want to have FOC in your favor. Step two, <laughs> full metal jackets suck. Hang on. All righty then. I have a lot of people who say, hey man, I want to shoot a really heavy arrow, like a full metal jacket, the worst arrow ever, this full metal joke it, and have some micro bends and have some annoying aluminum things, maybe have a heavy arrow pushing a really light point like that. that I mean, that's, wouldn't that be awesome? That's what the other guys are saying. No, no, that's not the goal. The goal, if you want to stay in the same weight as your current full metal jacket, is to move the full metal jacket weight forward. So here's a snapshot. Grant McCrab, who ran video for the hunting public, came down to the uh, test lab. And I said, hey, man, I've got arrows and everything. Just bring your bow. You'll be fine. He said, okay, fine. I'll do that. He's shooting a 340 Twizzler full metal jacket. And I immediately pulled those out of the square and threw those in the freaking table because they're not going to be shot at the ranch. And I set up some serious archery Apollos. I'm working with Sirius right now on a, on a big kit for arrows and points and all that stuff. More to come on that. So they were three. I had a 300 spine and a 250 spine. I had a 125 grain insert already installed. So it's already adult. And then he was shooting 125 grain points. The FOC for the full metal jacket, so it's 9%. That's a, what I call a balanced arrow. If you haven't seen my Impact Paradox video, go on the channel and look for Impact Paradox video. No, That phrase right there has never been used, I don't think, so you'll find it pretty fast. I'll try to put a link or something up, maybe. Anyway, 
by moving, by going to a lower grain per inch arrow, it's eight or nine grains per inch, putting a heavy insert and a 125 grain point, which he was shooting before, went from 9% FOC to 17% FOC. Here's a picture of what happens when you use a real arrow and, uh, you know, shoot them at pigs. <laughs> it's, a, it's his fat girlfriend. She weighs about 190 pounds because we have a scale. And he's, uh, he shot through her. The arrow, the arrow was buried in the dirt, probably six, five or six inches. I don't know, Grant. You can correct me on that on the comments if you want. And on the video, when the pig runs off, you actually see the arrow waving. So it was in her body. She runs off. It's stuck in the ground. It went through her because they're short out of the tree stand. Stuck in the dirt, six inches. And as she runs off, you see the shaft go like this because it was buried so hard in the ground that it was still inside of her when she ran off. So you want to not have a heavy arrow. You want to have a reasonably light and it's hard to get much below nine grains per inch with a 300 or 250. Okay, accept that, but don't intentionally put this on as your arrow and then try to run the FOC up. It's not the best system. It's like shooting a 250 or 300 grain bullet with a tail when you move the FOC from nine to 17%. That is something you need to do. Get that in your head. But see, that is a massive, massive change for a penetration on you know impact and accuracy. And then I, um, of course, had the Magnus Stinger buzz cut on there, which I ran on a strop and got it whew, scary sharp. That pig went, I don't know, 80 or 90, typical thing. Doesn't bleed, shot it through the lungs. It severed the aorta. We've got an autopsy on it. We'll see if that video comes up later, but that's the second thing. Do not put an anvil with a little bitty point on the front and try to push it through. Put an anvil on the front and have it pull the tail. All right. Next thing. All right, this is the Ranch Ferry test kit. It came out with Ethics, uh, I don't know, a month ago or something. And then we're also gonna work on a lighter version that's 100 grains up to 200, but that would be for you guys who are already gonna install inserts between 100 and 150, and then you can test. The reason why you shoot multiple field point weights is you are tuning the arrow to the bow and to you. You're not a hooter shooter. You're really not as good as you think you are. I've done this. So my bow, Pamela, shoots a 250 spine Apollo from Sirius right now. It's 27 inches long. It has a 125 grain insert and a 300 grain point and a bear shafts like a dart. 740, 25 or 26%. I promise you if, you, if I hand you Pamela and that arrow, it will not bear shaft perfect. And you can try to adjust your form and measure yourself and look in a mirror, or you can make the arrow shoot for your bow. So the reason why we walk through the field points, here's a picture of um, one of my subs who did this. He was shooting 50 or 55 pounds and 27 or 28 inches. It doesn't matter. He's shooting a 340 and a 300. Earlier in the video, I said, you know, 60 to 70, 300, 250 spine, and then lower weight, 340 and 300. In this picture, you can see that he's moving the shafts around and he's moving the points around. What that gives you is a tremendous amount of variability. You have two arrow spines, five different point weights. That's technically 10 different arrows you're shooting off the bow and they all come off differently. So as you add weight to the front, they, they, they flex differently. Every one of them does. It's like shooting different bullets through your rifle. You'll be shooting, 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 and one of them's just ice cream. I don't know if you've ever done that, but it does matter. You can find a bullet. My, I've got a 30 out 6 that eats 165 um, core locks, like candy. The other ones shoot fine, but it just like zings in. So that's the bullet you shoot, right? So what you're doing is you're taking a bunch of different points and you're tuning the arrow to behave with your bow, your release, however you let go. Like I said, I've actually given my bow to people, cut the, you know, I have bear shafts all the time because I'm always tinkering. I'll give them the arrow I know I can bear shaft and it rarely bear shafts for them. They push it different on the grip, they hold their hand different, they push on the string different, How, whatever that is, I don't know all about that. I'm not really much into the bow part because the, as Dr. Ashby says, <laughs> the arrow doesn't really care what's pushing it. If that thing is flying perfect, perfect for you and the way you do things, it's gonna fly better, okay? So 
a little more on that. If you go through the process, which I recommend, don't just shoot a bunch of bad arrows and blame it on the equipment or the broadheads or all that stuff. It's you because you didn't try. If you get your bear shaft flying, perfect. What does that mean? Well, Mr. Ferry, you're an idiot. Why would you shoot no fletchings? <laughs> okay. You get two spines. You shoot through the field points. All of a sudden, let's just say you put a 250 grain point on it, it just goes zonk. Perfect, perfect. What that means is it's launching perfect. It's coming off the bow perfect and the fletchings don't have to steer the arrow. There's a lot of people say, well, I'm heavy points. They ain't going to fly, so I'll put me some seven inch fletch and six fletch it. And that way so I'm going to really shoot straight. Or maybe your arrow's coming off sideways, takes off like this, broadhead catches some wind, starts flapping, eventually corrects and goes over there. And you blame everything but you're lazy on this. It's the fastest way to tune the arrow to your bow. It can be done. I, I've been amazed at this. This is big Mike Tanaka showed me this. He <laughs> keeps coming up. Amazing. It's better to have smart friends than to be smart. And I couldn't believe it. So my bow was pretty square. Mike squared it up. He put it into ATA spec. He changed the strings. We shot it in, got the string stress out or whatever. And then I just went back to it because I changed the strings. Everything changes. Started shooting, walked through the test cat kit, and shoo, now I'm going over 700 grains because I'm excessive. Somebody needs to be. Okay, that doesn't need to be you. You can go for 525 or 550, whatever. I recommend 600. It's fantastic. But if you're shooting and you're freaking obsessing over, well, I've got to shoot 620 or more. But 575 flies like an absolute bear shaft dart. Shoot 575. Or bounce the spine, cut the arrow a different length and keep moving. But that particular arrow, whatever length it is, if it shoots 625 sideways and it shoots 575 perfect, you want to go to 575 because you know it is flying the best. It's the least amount of corrections from your fletching. It's pulling the shaft and at impact, it's going to hit plumb, right? You don't want it hitting like that on the meat. You want it to hit dead, and I can't do this. Like that on the meat. You want it like that. There you go. Woohoo! This is bad because it kills your penetration. I don't care about targets. I don't care about your form. I'm not a target guy. But you can tune your arrow to your bow if you go through the process. You see that fancy commercial with it says, The only way is through. And it shows mostly hot chicks who happen to be CrossFitters. You know, they throw some Michael Phelps in there and Tom Brady and all that stuff. And there, it's basically the message is you got to work out. You got to do it and freaking suck it up and go. You can shoot 10,000 bad arrows and I don't care. Do not email me if you won't walk through the process. I just, I will ban you. No problem. <laughs> don't take it personal. I warned you. Go through the process. It's huge, huge for broadhead accuracy and penetration. I can't tell you enough. We got structural integrity. We're already talking about adult brown heads. We got that perfect arrow flight. One and two in Dr. Ashby's list are overlooked. I mean, like crazy, because everybody's obsessing over really heavy arrows. Oh, it's too heavy. Sideways 620 sucks compared to perfect 575. Likewise, sideways 785 grains if you're going to go Cape Buffalo hunting is not as good as perfect 700. Vice versa. This is important. If you are just going nuts and 610 shoots great and 550 sideways, but you're not going to shoot 610, you're an idiot. It works both ways. Final tip. If you're shooting along with your field points, and you'll see they'll, they'll, they'll shoot a little weird, and then one will tune in, you know, 225 and 250 shoot good, and then when you get over that, they shoot weird. Back up. Always back up. So um, don't shoot, um, don't shoot the edge. Right when you start to see them get weird, go back down. Don't shoot the edge because broadheads are longer. They got, you know, they shoot heavy. They shoot actually heavier than a field point because they drag in the wind a little more. 
So if you if you push, 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 and it starts to get a little wonky, say I'm going to shoot the heaviest arrow I can, like total arrow weight, you're going to screw yourself if you shoot the edge and don't shoot, you know, back down 25 grains and shoot the perfect, perfect. Just do that. Likewise, if heavy shoots awesome and you're just a freaking crazy and you say, oh, I gotta shoot, I can't shoot over 520, but, you know, 575 shooting great. It's a hand load. Penetration, broadhead flight, and accuracy. I can't do nothing for you. Don't email me that. I can't get over the fact that the heavy one shoots better than the light one. I can't shoot a heavy arrow like that. Don't email me that. Just don't go there because I will <laughs> respond. Yeah, it's predictable. All right, next. Here we go. So this will be the first adventure for a pile of you people for, with adult broadheads. Uh, lots of people making jumps from mechanicals or, um, you know, some package stuff. So my relationship with Mike Som has been forever. I don't get any compensation from him. I support him. He's a great man, great products, super reliable. If you're going to shoot his heads, if you're going to shoot a head that you want out of the box and you want to go to a cut on contact, the Black Hornet with these chisel serrations is offers some of the highest survivability for penetration on impact and through the thorax and through the chest wall that I've seen of anything. This and the Stinger buzz cut. Go on my channel. I've got reviews of both of them. I even kill stuff with them multiple times. I don't know, three or four times. Grant whacked his pig with a Stinger buzz cut and it they do really well. So if you don't want to mess with the sharpening things, you can sharpen these, but I'd just replace the blades if I was you. Um, then that's the easy button and reverse engineer. You can put 200 grain. You're going to shoot 600 grains in this guy. You're going to have to put a 200 grain insert in. Easy enough. Text me, email me, watch my videos. Pretty straightforward. If you're going to move up, I've got a lot of people buying, cut, buying um, single bevels and I am scared of something. I don't think you people know how to sharpen things. They got to be sharp. People are like, yeah, I know how to sharpen. You actually don't. <laughs> so... This scares me a lot because I think I'm going to get some emails and texts this fall where people say, man, my blood trail wasn't any good and I couldn't tell what was going on. And they, they went out there with a half-ass sharpened broadhead. They thought it was sharp, but it wasn't sharp. So this broadhead I've sharpened, this little dot on here, is on a strop. So I buffed off the edge of Grizzly. Um, I think it's a 120. I don't know what it is. Anyway, it's one of the Grizzly broadheads. It's one of the first single bubbles I ever shot. And I did not sharpen broadheads very well for a decade. So don't be insulted. And if you think you're freaking great at this, and if you're a knife sharpening expert, don't email me and say you can do it. But yeah, right, got it. But for the regular guy, if you're going to make the jump, you got to... The only way is through. <laughs> you're going to have to spend some time. I recommend you go on some knife sharpening channels and watch how they, how they run them on a stone, run them backwards, and pay attention to that. I'm going to have a sharpening video coming up. There's a couple of videos on sharpening. Most people take it to a wheel on a grinder that's a power tool, and most people don't have that. So that's just poser stuff. It's really a good way to do it, but it's an unnecessary piece of equipment. Get a, you know, a file, work them down, get some kind of a diamond stone, crock stick or whatever, and then I recommend a strop. Stropping is a not an art. It's just something that's crazy amazing. Just the weight of the broadhead on a piece of leather can make it unbelievable but don't freaking skip this step. I'm sorry. This used to be Woodsmanship 101 because we didn't have replaceable blade knives. And God knows I love my Havilons. But your broadheads have got to be really, really sharp. This is the biggest detriment to single bevels and hand sharpened broadheads is your broadheads aren't sharp and you don't touch them up. I had a guy the other day email me and say, yeah, I can sharpen stuff. I buff them up and sharpen them right before season starts. <laughs> Four months later, they erode all the time. You gotta constantly touch them up. You can't just sharpen them and leave them in the quiver. They're eroding all the time. So, sharp side, yeah, it's newspaper. And now, here we go, it's on. That'll do, right? That's what we want. You want it to be that sharp. This thing will shave hair right off your body. Um, there's a direct connection between the sharpness of the broadheads and the survivability through tissues. One of the dangers of, shoot, of um, a broadhead that's moderately sharp is the edge is actually a burr. It, it will shave pretty good and it will cut paper real rough. It'll be a, it'll make a hissing sound. So 
This is the duller side and it just hisses a little bit. Whereas the slick side, hear that shick sound? That's the super sharp side. Here's a photograph of that moderately shaving rough side run through bacon one pass. Just I just took a piece of bacon, folded it up, shoved it through. You see the edge of that blade, you see all that stuff, that's meat. In the teeth, in that rough edge, you hear that sound, it's actually rough. It's picking up material. This is something I saw in Dr. Ashby's writings. No one's talking about this. The, the Asiatic buffaloes have really fibrous skin. So if you have kind of a rough edge, it picks it up and it fills, it caulks the edge. It fills the edge. Remember that broadhead's going through goo 100% of the time. Not to mention when you shoot pigs and elk and stuff with sand all over them, okay? It may grab hair, go in, and you, I bet you all have seen this on those crappy broadheads you're shooting with those thin .027, woo! They're shredded and, and there's stuff in the blades. Anywhere there's meat, it's dull. And it's never clearing. Like there's no four wheel drive tires with an outlet. It grabs the stuff and it continues to push. It goes skin, fat, meat, meat, lungs, really elastic, duh, 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 and it's half the blades dull. It's pretty sharp, except for the caulk. You can't blame your broadheads if you do not sharpen them right. Here's a picture of the other side, this the sh 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 super side that's been run on a strop run through bacon one time with a macro lens. Both shots were with a macro lens. You have an artery there, they're semi-muscular. They're actually like a straw, like a sipping straw. They're more like a straw that you drink your Coke with than they are um, a very soft rubber anything, right? Balloon, okay, so compare a balloon is like a vein and an artery is more like a drinking straw. If your broadhead is shaving sharp but rough and it picks up material as it penetrates the skin, goes through the chest wall, fat, skin, it's never stopping, there's always goo. It's caulked. It continues to get caulked and those arteries will just bounce over. And then you blame your broadheads and you say, well, the broadheads, the animals don't bleed very big because I shot them right in the big part and I never miss, you know what I mean? My shot placement is 100%. And I shot this broadhead the other day, you wouldn't believe it. That deer ran like 300 yards and there wasn't a speck of blood. Whew. So you need to see my um, blood trails aren't controllable video. It's enlightening. And then you need to get this concept in your head. That thing's got to be slick, razor sharp. More to come. I'm going to do a full video on that. Big Mike did some stuff and touched up a bunch of uh, stock heads. You're going to be amazed. Some of the sharp heads out there. <laughs> and then you strop them and they get terrifying. That will come later on. I'm going to do that probably in the summer when deer's, you know, when hunting season's coming on. But you guys who are jumping to adult broadheads, you can't, you can't just sharpen them and run around for a month and a half. You got to touch them up every day. I would on a strop or something very soft, crock stick. You don't want to take steel off. You just want to keep the edge tight. There's tons of videos out there. I'm going to put a, um, I don't remember the guy's website. I'll put a picture up. I don't remember it off the top of my head. I'll put a picture up. I found this guy and he's a knife builder and a sharpening guy and he's solid. If you sharpen a single bevel, like he's sharpening a double bevel, you'll be fine. Okay. So that's that. Do not go in the woods with dull broad heads and then email me and say, I shot a deer or whatever and it ran off and didn't bleed. I put, I took me a meal bastard file because that's what old grandpappy used to do and he's smarter than anyone and he put that rough edge on there. That's the way to do it. It's the worst. It's going to grab material and slow everything down. Slick, razor sharp. Go back. Actually, no, don't go back. Here's bacon with rougher edge that shaves. Here's slick through bacon. If that doesn't make sense to you, buy the Magnus stuff because your head's too damn hard. And a lot of people are shooting lighted knocks. They really, really do hurt your FOC, but I, I like them. Uh, they're a benefit, especially on video. One of the things that the hunting public guys do really, really well, and I talked to Grant about this, it's kind of like their standard operating procedure. They shoot a deer and they can back up the video and see what they think they've got to do. I've said this on my other videos, if you will video, just get a selfie stick and clamp your phone in there and just get the shot, even if it's up in the corner. 
it really helps you on your recovery. What happens is you compile a bunch of shots. Hopefully you've killed, you know, you'll eventually kill eight or 10 and you'll have them on your phone. And when you see the arrow go through the animal, you can say, oh boy, last time that shot kind of happened. You know, he went 250 yards and jumped in the middle and all this. And you can predict to a certain degree, it's not always perfect, but it really does help to know where the arrow hit and um, figure that out and kind of figure out your strategy moving forward. It really does help. Grant, when he shot his pig, he came over, showed me the view. I said, dead. Like it was quartering away. And I've had a couple of them. I had one my, my nephew shot, video coming up soon. And the arrow actually, he shot to the right. And the air, pig jumped forward and it hit it right in front of the hips, high. And he happened to be running his phone. And um, what I saw was, I saw the arrow hit the pig and went right through him. Hit the pig and then redirect. And it actually hit and then came out going a different direction. I said, brother, you hit the, you hit the spine. You hit something that made that arrow bounce. It didn't go straight through. And... I said, so you probably severed the aortas because there's nothing hard. It's either going to be guts and straight through. I said, you got him. He said, yeah, I heard him running back and forth. I heard a bunch of thrashing around. We found him in five minutes. But if I hadn't had video, I'd have said, oh, boy, in front of the hips. Ugh. We'll just go back tomorrow. So that one was either, that would be your call. If you saw one just center mass in the guts, you just don't even go in there. They probably run 100 yards and lay down. If you go in there chomping around and making noise, they're going to haul ass. But in this particular case, I saw it redirect. So I think that lighted knocks are a benefit. Why am I talking about that? You should um, tune and shoot your field points with your lighted knock. They're a little different than the stock. Going down in weight's not gonna make as much difference. So going back to your stock knock just to shoot regular is not gonna make that much difference. But the, but the lighted knock could make some difference. So I would just get one lighted knock shoot through the test pack, do your bear shaft tuning, get it to shoot the light knock. Plus you can see it a lot better. You'll be able to see in the air when it's wiggling and stuff, as opposed to just a laser and then it hits and you see it just go a little bit. So they're a benefit for shot placement and then the weight's a little bit off. I have a bunch of knocks that are burned out. So I just, I shoot those when I'm tuning or I'll shoot a lighted knock. Um, I like the Luminox for that because you can just turn them on, push them in, turn them on. I like the Luminox, but you can just push them in, turn them on, leave them on. And then don't worry about it. Shoot through your system. You know, it takes 30 or 45 minutes to do it. You're not going to burn the thing up. And then they're tuned to lighted knocks, and then your fletchings will make difference for that. So that's why you should shoot lighted knocks to tune. And then when you put in your stock knocks to shoot 3D and stuff, it's not going to make a difference. All right, here we go again. Go through the heavy arrow hand load video. You'll see a pictures of paper tuning and stuff. There's paper tuning videos all over YouTube. I'm not going to cover that because it's covered. I shoot my block target and I put a 25 pound dumbbell on the top. Why would you do that? Because then the target doesn't move. So I'll just stand 10 yards away, eight yards away, just wherever. It doesn't really matter. And you'll shoot the field points and shoot the different arrows and you'll see them going in like this and all of a sudden one will just, I mean, it'll come off and it'll be just plumb lighted knock, etc. I discussed earlier in the video. So a bag target is not good for this because the arrows will get caught and they'll, they'll sag and stuff and they won't give you a true reading and you'll <laughs> have to pop zannies because uh, you'll think things aren't working when the arrow probably was fine when it hit and then it just hung out of the air. So you can shoot a Reinhardt, you can shoot a 3D target, it doesn't matter. The target has to sit still, it can't wobble or anything and it sure as hell can't slide side to side. Some of them will go in sideways and it levers it and it will slide the uh, target and then you won't get a true reading. And then I have a knock tuning video. So once you establish what point flies, you're, you know, you got your hand load, say it's a 225 or 250 grain point, you're gonna put in 125 grains of insert and shoot a 125, or you're gonna shoot a 225 grain adult broadhead. I don't really care how you get there, but you know what the basis of your hand load is. Then every single arrow you need to knock tune. That literally is the process going on my channel. I've got bear shaft knock tuning, and then I have one that's called knock tuning and broadheads. That's for fletched. It can be done. Literally, the uh, arrows have a spine. They're, they're overlaid from what I understand, and there's a stiff side and a soft side, which you're not really trying to find stiff or soft. You're trying to find, for you, what shoots that point, and that arrow comes off. I think they're probably consistent. I don't have a spine tester. God, I would just drive myself nuts. So every individual arrow 
you shoot, I prefer bear shaft, shoot, and then if it kicks, hits a little weird, you turn the knock, and they'll literally go like this, and all of a sudden they'll plumb, and you mark it. So go to my bear shaft tuning video, or go to my uh, bear shaft and broadhead video, and you will be able to understand how to do that. That's the final step. Once they're bear shaft, you find the point that flies and get your hand load. And then you knock tune every one of them in. They're flying super, super perfect. And then it doesn't take a lot of fletch. And I said finally, but I just reminded myself of something. You don't need five inch fletch. I shoot either Q2I Fusion veins because I find them to be very easy to stick to the shafts. I talked to the Q2I, the Fusion, whoever, people at the ATA, and the material that's on the bottom of a Q2I Fusion is different from the fletch. And I said, well, what's up with all the marker pins and all that stuff? And they said the fletching material on a lot of like blazers, I find to be a pain in the butt to freaking fletch. They're a little stiff and they don't want to stick. He said that material's moderately incompatible with some fletching cements. I didn't know this, it's new to me. I just know that when I do the fusions, I put the glue on there, it's got a little channel and has these two black uh, like legs on it. And those are a different material and more compatible with glues and they just sit right down. So if you roll your own, the Q2i Fusion 2.1 inches is all you need. I've shot the 1.75s, which is as much as 450 or 500 grains up front. And remember, it's bare shaft, not tuned. I go through the process. The only way is through. Once that arrow's flying perfect, it doesn't take a lot of fletch to fly because the point's pulling. The whole arrow and the fletchings are, are following along as opposed to pushing the shaft. And then if you're gonna shoot feathers, I shoot, I cut my own, but you can buy um, razors, roughly, you know, inch and a half long by half an inch tall. Once again, doesn't take much. All right, that's, uh, I think I covered everything, probably not. So if I did not, you have further questions, Troy at ranchferry.com. You can find me on Instagram under the Ranch Ferry and then W-R-A-Y Ranch Ferry on Facebook. Reach out to me. I'll help you however I can. This is intended to be an educational channel. This is a wrap up on the thing. I don't mind chatting with everybody, but I've had so many emails and stuff and it's probably gonna slow down here in the spring and then ramp back up in the summer. And I'm just gonna be able to send this video to people and then they can call me for, you know, eraser dust stuff. That's that. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, we're looking forward to seeing all the pictures of all the critters. So I do fairy duster stuff which means when I get pictures of success, I'll either post you on my Instagram, I do videos on them and stuff. It's fun to, to show the success of other people rather than <laughs> the stupid fairy shooting stuff. That doesn't really prove anything, but when it rolls out to people all over the country and now the world, I'm getting emails from all over the world, and then people send back and say, dude, that thing, like it went like right through that deer and it ran 40 yards and fell over. And I'm like, ha <laughs> yes. Or I've got one guy who, uh, he's a little bit evil and he's started um, shooting them pretty far, shooting deer pretty far forward with the two blade single bevel grizzly stick Maasai. And this year he's killed two deer where he's broken both shoulder paddles and had pass throughs. They really don't run very well when the front tires are blown out. So that helps. He said, I just don't track them anymore. <laughs> A little extreme example, you know, forward of the crease, lets her go and if they drop, it goes right through their shoulder paddles and they <laughs> arrow passes into the dirt and they'd kind of flop over there and die and, you know who wants to blood trail that's no fun just go pick up your deer all right that's it hit me on instagram facebook hit subscribe hit like i think there's something you're supposed to hit down there some bell I, dude i'm 51 i don't really pay attention to all that stuff ranch fairy out